Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're revisiting our quest to 3D print a high quality, flexible rubber mold that you could be forgiven for outright replacing vulcanized rubber or RTV molds when you go to inject wax. We've been exploring resins that could be suitable for this technique, as well as a lot of trial and error for exactly how to 3D model and then print these molds. Um, I'm not really aware of anyone that's actively teaching these techniques, so it's been very hit or miss for us. In our last video, we looked at Apply Labworks Spring Black Flexible Resin, and this material has a lot of promise as a resin that could work for this purpose. It has many characteristics that the jewelry industry expects from a injection mold, but that material got its whole video, so make sure you check it out at the link below. During that video, I mentioned a very specific resin from a very specific company that may just have the absolute best resin on the market today for printing injection molds. And that resin happens to be B9 Resilient. I had knowledge of this resin and had reached out to B9 Creations prior to recording the Apply Labworks video, uh, but we hadn't really hammered out exactly what or when they would be sending us anything. Normally this channel receives bottles of resin that we then test on our own machines. However, B9 Creations makes high-end DLP 3D printers, and a lot of their resins are tailored to print on their machines. And sadly, I haven't convinced them to send me over a B9 core machine for review yet. But trust me, I am not giving up and I will be definitely trying to get one for the channel. Anyway, they sent us over this sample box of resins to take a look at. There's a few in here, actually. They also printed out for us uh, samples of all of the rings that we use on this channel for casting resins. This has been printed in their B9 castable emerald material, which we've never actually looked at before. But we have some now, so make sure you get subscribed because we're not actually going to talk about that at all. We're going to talk about this, this unsuspecting little box. This is B9 silicone resilient resin. And as I said, it is possibly the best resin for the job when it comes to making injectable molds. Before I even open it up, let's take a look in comparison to some of the other ones that we've been looking at. The immediately striking difference that we see between this mold and the ones from, the, from spring uh, is the outside surface quality. The, the outside of this resilient one is just phenomenal. Uh, the, it's, everything is flat, there is no blemishes. Um, there is this little kind of a silvery look to it and that actually comes from like the pixel density. But I, I, this is DLP, so it, it's incredibly high quality. Now keep in mind that this mold was printed by B9 reps who know exactly how to use this resin appropriately. Without having the resin itself on hand, we can't really say whether or not we would have had similar issues learning to print with the resilient silicone as compared to spring. I was almost certainly overthinking when I was designing the, uh, the mold locks for our spring print. Uh, I was kind of assuming that the tiny little cuts that you see on one of these natural rubber molds uh, was somehow advantageous. However, I'm not think I'm rethinking that thought now. Um, it, it seems pretty logical though that if you were to get flashing on a printed mold, it would be much easier to remove a straight one, which would be created from having big flat halves, than a jagged one. The easiest way to fix the you know, any flashing issues that could be related to that is to increase the clamping pressure. And of course, to have the two halves of the mold as best a match as possible. Now, the butterfly is beautiful. On the note of these molds being flat, you'll notice that the design, while very intricate, is pretty much all surface based. So in choosing to send this sample to us, it kind of implies to me that there might be some limitations or at least some serious considerations that have to be taken while printing a mold. And that was something that we definitely ran into with spring as well. I suspect that with the B9 resin, as well as the Apply Lab spring, any printing done with this material must be done supportless. There is no way that I can think of, of getting around the fact that a flexible material cannot reliably make a support, regardless of how thick you print them. Um, because you're basically just printing a noodle. 
Resilient has a really nice level of flexibility for extraction. Just, you know, handling this material, you can definitely feel a bend to it. And you could actually change that bend to be more or less by simply adding thickness to the mold. So it's, again, a very variable thing that you can customize to your taste. B9 Resilient does have a higher durometer or shore hardness rating of 65 to 70 as compared to Apply Labs, which has a 57 to 62 rating. B9 has an image on their website of a very intricately printed heart mold. And I honestly had hoped that this is the one that they would have sent to us because it's definitely the more interesting in my opinion. I didn't explicitly ask though, so that's kind of on me. But we do have the image. And for what we can see, it looks like they've come up with some really creative ways of wax extraction with multiple interlocking parts. You'll notice too that all of these parts when considered individually, irrespective of the, the others, were all printed flat and supportless as well. Anyway, let's go and inject this mold because we haven't actually had a whole lot of time to play around with anything they sent at all. We've been so busy with other things. But I have to say that based off of the initial visual impression of this print, I'm very impressed and I really don't see any room for too much issue here. The one little hiccup that I can foresee is that the nozzle that B9 printed into this mold is a different shape than my old faithful hand pump injector here. This little guy has been passed down through like three jewelers that I know of uh, as far back as the 1970s and it's still working perfectly. Times have changed though and this cone-shaped nozzle has been replaced by a more rounded one on many of the other wax injectors that you can find today. You would be able to change this aspect though on the 3D model itself without any issue whatsoever so I cannot count this as a ding. But we're going to give it a try anyway and uh, we'll definitely get this to work one way or the other. Resilient has a really nice level of flexibility for extraction, but not so much that under pressure it wouldn't squish and deform. The surface quality of the injection is phenomenal and glassy, exactly what you would hope for in a wax model that you're about to cast. This means that the post-processing and cleanup after casting is virtually none or extremely minimized. So I know that this wasn't exactly a normal video for this channel, and I do apologize for that. Uh, believe me, we are not finished with this subject. If nothing else, we have found that this is quite possibly the perfect resin for the job, although we would still love to be able to actually um, print it ourselves. If B9 wants to send us a printer, that would be great. We also need to learn more about this technique for building the actual 3D model because I feel like this is just such a, a next level way of thinking that it's just going to require a lot more research and trial and error. Genuinely, I believe that some of the software could be developed within our lifetime that could easily streamline this whole process in much the same way that Matrix Gold handles, say, like Pave stone setting. You basically have a model, you throw a diamond on it, and it asks how many, how big are they, and it cuts all the seats and the prongs and everything for you automatically. A much larger question is whether or not the cost of casting resins will come down and the capability and reliability go up fast enough to bully, basically, uh, injection molds into obsolescence. Will wax injection still have a place in the industry in the future? Can't really say until we get there. The last thing I want to iterate before we go is why exactly this whole process is even worth the headache, frankly. Printing molds adds another use to your already extremely capable 3D printer. So you can maximize your investment in a 3D printer and begin to justify perhaps much higher end machines that have much more capability than the less expensive ones. You'll be able to cut out three steps of the entire mold making process at minimum. Those being the model preparation, like having a soldering a sprue onto a master, then vulcanizing or degassing uh, RTV, and of course the highly skilled and tedious mold cutting process. Building off that last point, you would no longer need the highly specialized and quite likely expensive equipment needed to make some of these molds, like a vulcanizer or a vacuum chamber for degassing the RTV silicone. Or for that matter, the special tools that you might need for cutting the molds perfectly. You would be replacing the traditional mold making materials with resin, which is 
kind of a negative and kind of a positive at the same time, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, resin is a little bit more expensive than natural rubber for making vulcanized molds, but these materials are becoming harder and harder to come by. Um, maybe you haven't heard, but there is a major rubber shortage right now. This rubber also has a shelf life, which gets shorter and shorter the warmer it is. You also wouldn't need to even have a master mold because obviously this is all done digitally. So you can work with clients at a much greater distance without having to ship anything, which as we all know these days is getting much more expensive. You also have total control over how the mold is built. So you could even run like flow simulation tests to make sure that uh, you know, there's no turbulent areas or bubbles before you even inject. Arguably a really big one for especially larger businesses is you could imprint each one of these molds with information like client names, model names, variation, uh, ring size, the, the wax extraction instructions, and lastly, the waste factor to some degree. Being able to print just what you need perfectly without uh, any extra rubber offcut, uh, all the wrappers that I peel off of the natural rubber, uh, the mixing bowls and the mixing sticks for RTV uh, is certainly a factor that you have to take into account. Now I know that printing isn't flawlessly clean, but it's definitely a cleaner alternative. So that's quite a lot of information to sift through. Uh, definitely food for thought. In some cases, this is more of a trade-off than an absolute resolution for some of those problems with the more traditional methods, but definitely still worth considering especially if you haven't already got those expensive tools in place. With that, I'll close out this video. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about 3D printing molds and let me know if I missed anything. If you'd like to help support this channel, uh, check out our website where we sell our own jewelry as well as educational products like stone setting practice rings and cheat sheets, which just make your life easier. Also check out our membership program where we have an ever-growing Discord community where you have access to me on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. So if you want, just check that out at the link below.